Welcome to Friday Night Q&A. Um, tonight, once again, I have Brian with me. Brian, welcome. Thanks, uh, Renier. I wouldn't be any other place than this place as we discuss God's Word and uh, this all-important question, what happens when a person dies? Amen. Now, this week's lesson talks about the Holy Spirit being important when we preach the Word of God. So at this stage, mm. I would like you to pray that the Holy Spirit will help us as we delve into these three questions about death. Sure, let's do so. Father in heaven, we thank you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He has the keys to the grave and to death. He has the answer as to what happens when a person dies. But above all, Jesus can give to us eternal life now that even if we die the first death, we will come up at the first resurrection. Lord, you have promised deliverance from the second death, eternal death. And I pray that as we study your word about what happens when a person dies, that we may recognize that you are the resurrection and the life. If we believe on the Son, he who believeth on the Son has eternal life. May that be the experience of us as your children and the viewers that we will accept Jesus, your Son. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're still on the topic of what happens when you die. We'll probably still do it a, a couple more just to make sure that we cover all the questions in relation to this. Now, last week we saw that, you know, a soul is the body and the breath combined equals a living being or a soul. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. And that when you die, mm. the opposite happens. You know nothing. Your plans perish. You don't praise the Lord. People that come to your grave, you do not hear what they say, etc. So we have basically seen what the Bible says about death mm. in the simplest form. But we are going to give more information to make sure that we understand all of Scripture in regards to this topic. So, Brian, sometimes people right. say, yeah, but you say that. The Bible does say that. I can see it in Scripture. But there was this guy that went to the operating table. He died. He he left his body. He could see the people operating. He could go to another room and see what's happening there, etc. These near-death experiences where people, they see the light and they ask green light, red light, green light being still alive. And then they ask the green light. And then um, amazingly, they're back to life. How, how should we understand this? What is this whole near-death experience? What could it be? So, Renier, that's an important question because a lot of people are, you know, influenced by these so-called, you know, afterlife or near-death experiences. And um, as we use God's word as a filter, we realized from our study last week that the dead know nothing. Their thoughts perish and their body begins to decay. And, of course, the spirit, which is the breath, returns to God. So clearly, these near-death experiences, which are not recorded in the Word of God, there's no one that's come with a near-death experience and said, well, this is what I saw. I saw I was going through this tunnel and a bright light there, and the voice told me, come on. We, we don't hear of anything such as that. What we have re recorded in the Bible is where prophets go into vision. And I taken, Paul says, I was taken into the third heaven and he saw Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, and so did Isaiah and other prophets have these wonderful, glorious visions. John the Baptist, uh, not John the Baptist, John the Revelator and Daniel. But um, near-death experiences, uh, if you look at every single one of them, they come from people who are not uh, having faith in Jesus Christ. They are not believers in the word of God. And uh, some may claim to be, but if they are, then they are not truly representing the word of God and the reality that when a person dies, they know nothing. If your thoughts perish and you are asleep, as I know our study will take us through, um, you know, when I'm asleep, I'm asleep, you know, <laughs> I, I I'm oblivious to what's happening at my office, what's happening to my drivers who are driving on the roads, wherever they are. I mean, I'm in my bed, I'm asleep. Um, so 
that's what the Bible speaks of death being. So, yeah, these kind of uh, stories, uh, they are the imagination, sometimes the hallucinations of people who may even be under some hypnotic state, maybe on just come off an operation table. So, you know, the anesthetic is still, you know, mm. causing, you know, some sort of hallucinations in the minds. Uh, that's what I believe uh, it is. Uh, uh, anything outside of the word of God, I don't believe. That makes so much sense. It's actually that last part that you said about the hallucinations. Because BBC actually had an article in August 24, 2007, where they said experts have found a way to trigger an out-of-body experience in volunteers. Meaning they can actually trigger it, that you have an right. out-of-body experience. The experiments described in the science journal offer a scientific explanation for near-death experience phenomenon. So it's a scientific explanation. And it literally comes down to the drugs yeah. that are coming into you while you're in the operating table makes you hallucinate. And what right. happens then, it looks so real, yet it isn't real. Mm. That's why we always yeah. need to compare it with the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? Mm. There's this video on YouTube where the guy says he was in hell, five minutes in hell, 20 minutes in hell, something like that. And he explains hell. And he quotes scripture about Hades. So many of the scriptures that he's quoting is talking about the grave. It's not talking about hell. It's talking about the grave. And he quotes these scriptures and explains the demons that are there and how they are torturing people, etc. And I'm like, people, people are so, so many people are believing this. this. They're inviting this guy to speak. And people are then converted because of fear because of how terrible hell is, yet it's not in the Bible. It's not there. It's not there at all. Hell is there, but not the way he explains it. And it's the same with these near-death experiences. And then you get movies about a boy saying, I was here, I was there, etc., out of my body. Yet it can happen in vision in God. Like Paul said, I was taken up to the third heaven. But near-death experiences, the drugs, or the devil himself masquerading, but it's not in line with the Bible. So then the next yeah. question is, is man by nature immortal? In the beginning, God created and he added the breath and the body and man became a soul. You don't have a soul. You became a soul. Is mm. that person by nature, meaning after creation or after conception as, as we are born today, are you immortal? Meaning, you are going either to eternal heaven when you die because you are immortal or you going to eternal hell at the same time because that's what the people are arguing or what they are saying when you die you either go to hell or heaven and both is eternal so that means i must be immortal by nature is this biblical right no absolutely not because the bible clearly states friends that uh, in 1 Timothy 1 verse 17, I'd like us to put it on the screen there. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 17. Let's, Let's just read that there. I'm reading from the New King James. Uh, it says, uh, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, to God alone is wise. Right? Mm -hmm. Be on and glory and forever. So it is only God who is immortal. Yes. Um, we are mortals, which means subject to death. Mm -hmm. God has immortality. And we're going to see, of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think believes verse 51 tells us when we will take on immortality. Yes. Um, you know, you're, sp you're speaking about hell. Many people don't understand the subject about hell. In fact, it was uh, the great uh, atheist, Charles Darwin, who was actually studying to become a preacher, mm. a priest. And he actually became an unbeliever because the people who taught him about hell was that you'll be burning forever and ever. Um, and that's not true. But the point is, hell will come and hell was only meant for the devil and his evil angels. Jesus said there in the book of Matthew 25. So when you look at this thing here about immortality, we are going to die sooner or later the first death. Um, there's only 
two individuals in the Bible I know of, that's Enoch and Elijah, that were translated to heaven without seeing death. So they are the only two I know of. Mm -hmm. But the rest of us, we will all at some stage die, and we're going to come up in one of two resurrections, either the first resurrection unto life or the second resurrection unto eternal damnation, which is when hell will be experienced, and it's not forever. I'm sure we're going to study that on, in one of our uh, sessions, uh, what happens in hell and when is hell? Because some people believe hell is burning today. It's certainly not. Because if that's true, that means sinners are immortal because when you die, you don't really die. You go to hell, so you carry on burning and you carry on living. Uh, if you're good, as they teach, we looked at it last week, you go to heaven and you carry on living. No, 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 no. That's not what happens. We are mortal. We are subject to death. And so the death in the Bible is spoken of as asleep, knowing nothing until one of two resurrections. I also want to read the text in, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, okay. verse 15 and 16, which says, which he will manifest in his own time. That's not at the Lord's appearing, according to verse 14. He who is blessed and, and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable mm -hmm. light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor, everlasting power. Amen. So the Bible says God right. alone has immortality, and you also shared a verse there. The Bible says, so says to us in Job 4, verse 17. Let's go to Job 4, verse 17. Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Now that's clear. Can a mortal, not yeah. an immortal, can a mortal yeah. be more righteous right. than God? So the Bible says we are mortal and God alone has immortality. Um, so we are not by nature immortal. We cannot go to an eternal heaven or eternal hell at death because we don't have immortality. That's part of the mm. reason why God removed the tree of life from the garden when Adam and Eve or expelled them from the garden, then removing the whole garden at in the beginning when they sinned, or else they would have lived forever while eating of the tree of life and they have sinned. And that's why God mm. said, no, I don't want sinners living forever. And yet Christianity right. teach, no, sinners live forever. And that's, that's not in the scriptures. No, God no. even went so far. On this point, he even went so far to say, you know what? I don't want sinners to even reach a hundred or 120 at most. So he said to Noah, after the flood, I want you to eat the animals. And they went from 969 years, Methuselah. He died in the year of the flood. But people lived, you know, over 900 years down to a hundred because they started eating foods that started killing the body. And that's what Spirit of Prophecy says too. So God's plan for sinners is not to live long. He's like, I don't want you to live long because I can't endure sin. I can endure you, but not sin. Yeah. He doesn't hate the sinner. He hates sin. And yet people say, no, 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 you're going to burn forever or you're going to go to heaven forever because you're immortal. Is so the opposite of what scripture is teaching. God is saying, I want to shorten the lifespan of sin, not extend it. I want righteousness to be everlasting, not sin. So it is totally opposite. The devil has really twisted this thing incredibly by placing lies into Christianity. And it comes from the dark ages. It comes from the Antichrist himself. And yet people are believing it today. Mm. Our last question. If we are not by nature immortal, when will we receive immortality, Brian? I was waiting for that question to come up, and I've got my Bible open to the passage here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I want to read verses 51 through to verses 53. And by the way, we read uh, Job last week, Job chapter 14. He says, if I go to the grave, I go down in silence. And he says, uh, and you will hide me until my change shall come. So here's the change that Job was talking about, Renir. And it says here, behold, in verses 1, 51 rather, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, behold, I show you a mystery. 
we shall not all sleep. So the Bible speaks of death as a sleep, but we shall all be changed. So when will this change come? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, Hmm. And we shall be changed. That's the first resurrection. Then verse 53 says, For this corruptible, our corrupt bodies must put on incorruption. And this mortal, our mortal body subject to death, must put on, what's that word? Immortality. Immortality. So when is this last trumpet going to be sounded? Well, here exactly in the Bible, Paul tells us when this last trumpet will sound. And I'd like us to go to 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter four. First Thessalonians. Uh, first, first Thessalonians, sorry. First Thessalonians, thank you. First Thessalonians, we can take us there so our readers can, can, can look at it there. First Thessalonians uh, chapter four and verses uh, 15 again. It says here, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So this is the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So Paul is saying, listen, those who have died in Christ are asleep in the grave. When he comes the first time, the second time rather, and, and the first resurrection takes place, we will not be able to stop them from coming out of the graves. What will happen? Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, that's Jesus Christ. Uh, Michael, who is going to resurrect the, re the dead in Christ? And with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then this wonderful promise. Then we which are alive and remain, those who will be translated 144,000 without seeing death, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So immortality, the Bible tells us very clearly, will only be given when we see Jesus come in power and great glory, when he raises up the dead and he changes those who are alive, that are mortal, they become immortality. Of course, the, God, the ones who come up of the graves in the first resurrection, they come up with immortality. God gives it to them as they come of the grave. So that's, that's the great, wonderful day that we all should be looking forward to when we will Amen. have immortality. I'm looking for a text here. Uh, okay. Philippians, Philippians 3.21. When we come from mm -hmm. the graves or receive immortality at the second coming if you're alive and you have not seen the death to what will be be transformed to our bodies our characters goes to heaven just like the way it is so therefore it needs to be transformed before the time right. and if you have died mm -hmm. jesus character will make up for what you did not know yet but philippians 3 21 says who will mm -hmm. transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. And I also, before I comment on that, I also wanted to read Daniel 12, 1 and 2, when it comes to what you've just read. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince, who stands for watch over the sons of your people. And there will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone mm. is found and written in the book of life. In, mm. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, yet they receive it, and some to shame and everlasting mm. contempt, which is after the thousand years. Mm. So, so the point is here, when Jesus comes, he resurrects those who died in him. They receive immortality. What bodies do they receive? Right. They are transformed to his glorious body. Now, this is important to understand. Mm -hmm. Not even Jesus had immortality as a man. He was subject mm -hmm. to death. When he died, he knew nothing. The divinity of him did not die. That part we cannot understand, nor am I going to try to explain it. But his humanity did die, and his humanity knew nothing, meaning Christ himself did not have immortality as a man. How can you and I have it? He's sinless. He didn't have it. Now right. we say that we have it. And when did he receive his glorious body? When he was resurrected. And the, the holes right. is still in his hands. 
The crown of thorns where it pierced him, still there as evidence unto eternity of what sin cost God, mm. his own son. And therefore, we are only transformed into his glorious body when we come from the graves or when he comes and transforms us at the last trump. So the Bible is very clear. We do not have immortality now. So, so Renier, as I was looking at Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 21, which you uh, quoted, which uh, actually agrees with what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, verses uh, 51 that we read, uh, and 52. Uh, it says there in verses 19, it shows those who are lost, whose end, it speaks about the enemies of the cross in verse 18, and says whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. So those are the lost. But when it comes to those who will have immortality, whose bodies are going to be changed, whose vile bodies, mortal bodies are changed, it says, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul looked forward to that time when the Lord would come. Uh, he died in the hope of this resurrected, glorious body that he would have. And he says that to, to Timothy in First, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, he says, I'm now ready to be offered. And he says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge will give unto me on that day when he comes in power and glory. But not to me only, but also to them who love his appearing. So clearly that's when we have these immortal bodies uh, that God has promised to the faithful, those who are righteous. And so we must pray that God will change our characters now on this earth because in the grave, there is no second chance. You know, mm -hmm. the devil has told people right from the Garden of Eden that you will not surely die. And so this thing about immortality, this thing about a soul that lives on, it's all a big lie. It is one of the devil's most uh, successful lies because so many people have bought into it. Hollywood. Screens of people and they believe about these angels that come. Uh, you know what? The Bible speaks of the, the devil is an angel, a fallen angel, but it says he comes as an angel of light and he, what, he perverts the truths of God. So God said to Adam and Eve, when you sin, when you transgress my law, you will surely die. The devil said, no, when you sin, you will know everything. You will be immortal. You will not surely die. Hmm. Well, it's interesting you, you mentioned, uh, Renier, that the, 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 they lived just over 900 years, 969. Uh, I think it was, uh, Adam was 960. Somewhere around there was, it was 950. The point is this year, the Bible says a day with the Lord is as a what? A thousand, a thousand years. years. Not one of them even lived a day yes. in God's sight. They all died before a thousand years. And so immortality is given to those who will be in Christ. Yes. When they come up from their graves, if they die, they must be in Christ. Of course, the 144,000 who are alive when Jesus comes, well, their characters have been transformed and changed by the Holy Spirit, the latter rain. And mm. so they will be translated out seeing death but their lives their characters have been changed it's the body the body is still needed that change to immortality amen thank you for that brian and for our viewers i pray that we have answered your questions that the three questions that we did do are clear in your minds and that you understand it better and next week we will continue our discussion about death and look at three more questions about this topic so by the time that we are finished with it it's been clearly dealt with and you have with clearness in your mind, you can understand say, this is what the Bible teaches. Brian, thank you for your time once again in our program. And we'll see you again next week. And for our viewers, subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel if you haven't done so yet. So that you can stay up to date as we upload videos every Sabbath onto the conference channel. Let's just pray as we end off. Father in mm -hmm. heaven, thank you for your word. That is truth. I pray that you will give us an understanding and that we will not be deceived by the devil. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.